Hey, welcome to our PineScript how-tos. Today I'm showing you how to set your position size based on your risk management and stop loss. This will work for any currency, so Forex, crypto, no problem. The first step is to configure the strategy header properly, or should I better say what not to set in the strategy header. And you shouldn't plug in any default quantity value nor default quantity type. The amount that we'll use for each trade will be computed directly in the trade entries. I'll show you that in a minute. You may have noticed though that I have a currency called currency.none in the strategy header here. This is simply to signal TradingView to display all the results in the quote currency automatically. And in this example, it is US dollars. As you can see here, for example, in the strategy tester, my results are given indeed in USD. But this is actually the default value, so you don't actually need to write that down. This would suffice. Let me do a control S and show you that indeed you get the US dollar here. Great. The reason why I wanted to highlight that is that say, for example, you want TradingView to convert all the results displayed in a different currency, you could change it here. Say, for example, I wanted to see my results in euros, then this is what you should do here. There we go. You see euros here as well. But that doesn't mean that the positions are entered in euros. No, not at all. This always remains the code currency. This is what you're trading with. The initial capital is still in the code currency. It's only a question of display and trading view does automatically the Forex conversion. This doesn't stop to Forex. Of course, I could have chosen another cryptocurrency if I wanted the display to be different. As you can see, we have ETH now here as well. Great. Now we can move on to the computation of the position size. If you need to refresh your knowledge about the maths behind computing a risk adjusted position size, check that video out up there. I go through it in details. Moving on, the next step is to get your stop loss price. So here you would come and put whatever your strategy dictates. Here in this example, what I went for is simply to consider a stop loss that is given with a percentage difference from my entry price. Now, with the stop loss price at hand, the next step is to compute the actual position size. So the number that you see here refers to a percentage. Having written 0.01, it means I am willing to risk only 1% of my capital on each trade. So differently, if a trade goes against me, I will lose only 1% of my capital. Then the next lines, you don't have to change anything. This one is what I call the distance to stop loss. So it is nothing but the computation of the difference between the entry price minus the stop loss price, where I make sure that the result is given as a positive number, thanks to the absolute value here. And the following line is actually the computation of the amount to enter the trade with, where you can see it is this value at risk times strategy dot equity, which is basically the amount of capital that you have divided by this distance to stop loss. Nice. All we have left to do now is to configure the entries properly. It is very simple. All that needs to be done is to take the amount that was computed here and plug it in the QTY argument in the strategy entry function. So let me finish by showing you that it all runs smoothly. Okay, with our 1% exposure, we get in this example, net profits of 46% and a maximum drawdown of 15%. Okay, if we now double our exposure and go for 2%, what we're naturally gonna obtain is that indeed our net profits increased here to 106%. That makes sense. We are now engaging more funds in each trade, but what comes with that is that also the maximum drawdown increases 27% now. That's it. I hope it was clear. I will put this code on our GitHub so you can grab it for free. Links below. And if you found this content helpful, don't forget the little like and possibly subscribe. See you soon and take care.